Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, we're starting on episode number 35, and uh, I still have a little bit more 12 volt to do. I got to do the refrigerator, wire that in, and an accessory plug, and uh, just some cleanup work. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that done today. But um, what I wanted to show you first is I have my uh, 110 stuff all set out. And I have most of it here, and I kind of wanted to explain to you what I was going to do with that. Because I'm going to be doing that next. It'll probably be on the next episode. But I just want to show you the pieces and parts I have. And we'll get into the building of it a little bit later. You know, location of the outer plug, the, the receptacle, where the short power comes in. Or, um, you know, the rest of the system as I put it in. But I just want to show you a few of the uh, materials I'm using. So give me a second. I'll get this camera turned around and uh, we'll take a look. Okay, this is uh, this is made by Epicord. This is the 30 amp power inlet where uh, this will be mounted onto the very back panel of the bus. I haven't decided which side yet, but um, I've purchased it and uh, it's going to be a 30 amp. Usually I put a 15 amp in on my smaller buses, but this one is pretty good size, so. I wanted to make sure that it had plenty of power because I am going to run a small air conditioner in there. I wanted the room to room type ones that I can move around and I'm going to have uh, some 20 amp plugs in there for that. But this is it. It's got a twist lock in it. Can you see that? And uh, the wires will go in the back here. And I'm going to be using a 10 gauge. And I'm going to be using a stranded wire. And um, I'll show you that next. Ten gauge, stranded. Um, in a moving vehicle, I think stranded would probably be better than use like a house wire. And because uh, the house wire is a solid piece inside of it. And you know, it doesn't take a lot of this before it before it'll break off and it could cause a short or a problem later on. That's why I want to use stranded wire. Um, I bought me about, uh, I think I have six feet of it and this is a uh, armored cable. It could be used for uh, outdoor if you wanted to, but it was the only thing I could find in the stranded. So I figured the extra armor on the outside of it isn't going to hurt anything. And uh, that's what I'm going to use as the feed wire going between the plug and the fuse box. This is the fuse box I'm using. Get it there in case you guys want to pause it and look at it. It's got, uh, it's got two openings in it. One of them is punched out in this picture, but it's got another opening there where you can put two fuses in it. Here's the fuse box itself. So you can see by the size of my hand, it's a pretty small fuse box. It's going to have uh, two of these fuses. They're not fuses, they're breakers. And uh, let me turn it right side up for you. 15 amp and a 20 amp is what I'm going to put in it. And um, that should take care of my electrical needs. And um, after that, when I wire my plugs, I'm going to be using some more of the same type of cable, only this is a 14 gauge instead of 10. And I don't need all four wires, but I had this in my shop and it's also exterior. It, it's sunproof and uh, water resistant. I think this would make a great cable for inside the bus. Um, it's hard to flex it because it's, it's got a solid rubber cable on it and I think that'll help keep it stationary especially if I tie it down good and I'm going to be running my plugs on this and uh, I'm going to have one 20 amp plug that I can either run a heater or the air conditioner off then I'm going to have a couple 15 amp plugs which I can run blenders in the kitchen or um, uh, a TV or anything like that if you wanted to run it on 110. Um, even though I do have my TV set up for 12 volt, 
Um, but it, I'll have the option for that. Then there will also be uh, a couple more plugs in there that run off the inverter, but they'll be completely separate from this system. Okay, I just thought you guys would like to see that. And, uh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> this is for my 12 gauge uh, wiring. I mean, my 16 gauge wiring I was doing in the bus. This is what I was making all my cabling out of. These are 100 feet long, and I had to go buy two more. I ran through 100 feet of this stuff. Well, actually 200 feet, because these are 100 each. And I had to go buy more. Man, that's a lot of wire. So, oh, and also, this, this is a nice little thing to have. I've got a little box of these in the store, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run a GFCI in, inside there, ground fault circuit interrupter. And uh, that's just for safety. These are some Chinese made ones, but I'm, I'm sure they're fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go from there. I've got to go back and finish up my 12 volt, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys, I've been cleaning this up a little bit here. And um, see this big heavy wire right here? That's a 12 gauge wire. It's going to the fridge because see it's going to a 15 amp breaker up there and uh, the only uh, thing I have left to do now is um, this water pump right here I've got to run the water the line over to the water pump and uh, and the accessory right here I was going to run that over to uh, another plug but it's only a 5 amp circuit so I, I think I'm not going to do that um, I was thinking about maybe coming down to here and um, running off of here and put me in another 15 amp breaker and come right off of this and run it over to that other plug. Um, the plug would be on all the time if this is turned on down here, which it is. But anyway, that's the only thing that I have a problem with that because I wanted everything to turn off and on with this panel right here. But, you know, on the flip side of that, I did put in this 20 amp circuit right here. And it runs down and comes right into the blue C panel also. So that thing is also run independent. So I don't, th you know, the plugs, um, they draw 15 to 20 amps depending on which one you buy. And, uh, so I'm going to have to run those separately through this panel right here. So I can put me a 15 amp breaker in right here. Now I can't run it through here because these are only 5 amp. And the stereo slot is only 10 amp. And I don't have the stereo yet, so I'm not going to wire it in because I'm not sure where it's going to go. And uh, um, I'll go ahead and show you the wire. This is the wire for the, uh, the refrigerator. I put it in, got it all armored. I had to cut the 12 volt plug in part of it off and hook it to that 12 gauge wire, which I hooked into the fuse panel. But this is the business end of it down here. This is the piece that goes into the, uh, right there. That's the piece that goes into the, plugs into the actual refrigerator. Hi Rubes. You got a kitty in a box again, huh? Hey, buddy. Hi, right, buddy. Come here. Come here, buddy. What are you doing, huh? I'm glad I covered up those chairs because he's been sleeping on them. But I've got a uh, plastic over them now, so. Hey, buddy. Ropes. Hi, right, buddy boy. You just want a little attention, don't you? Just woke up and sleeping all morning. Even while I'm working, he sleeps. He's pretty relaxed around me, I think. Yeah, this got that out of the way anyway. So I, I'm going to go ahead and wire in that. Can't see it down, and that's kind of dark. The water pump down there, and um, once it's wired in, and I tie up a few loose ends, I'm pretty much done with the 12 volt electrical. And I'm going to move on on to the 110 electrical. And uh, here's another thing I've been toying with. 
instead of buying a really expensive piece of aluminum, I bought this L bracket here. And it's slightly smaller than that aluminum one I put in here to hold this shelf up. Um, but I thought this one would be nice because it has these little hooks on it. And uh, when I build the shelf back here, you know, over to there, I could also use that for hanging things if you wanted to hang in there. You know, like hanging coats or uh, clothes, especially if you tucked it over to one side over here. Because um, your feet are going to be down on this end anyway. And uh, it might be, you know, just for an option for extra room, basically. But um, And it sure would support that uh, shelf when I put that shelf up in there. So, well, I think I'm going to get back out there and... Uh, Maybe I'll start it on the 110. Yeah, see those little dirty feet have been? Yeah, I got these all covered. We cleaned them and we put covered them all up with uh, plastic, both of them. Even the front seat. <laughs> on the bottom of the front seat anyway. He doesn't like the front seat too much. He always likes this seat right here. Yeah, dirty little kitty. All right, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Hey campers, I decided to go ahead and start in on the 110 wiring. Um, this is the plug, this is the back of the plug here. It's just the cover. And this is the front of the plug with the twist lock. So, to put this wire on, I took this number 10 stranded wire like we talked about earlier, and I stripped it back about that far on the ends. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in into this, uh, into these holes. They have little screws on the side here, and it backs open a little gate that's in there. So what you want to do is screw that out first, open that little gate, put your wire in there, screw this back in, and it will shut the gate and crimp down onto the wire. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure all the little gates in there are open. I can look down the top of the hole and see when they open. I don't know if you can see that or not. I probably can't. But they're all open now. I'll put this thing in its upright position. This goes on the bottom. This is like a little gasket here. Um, what I have to do is I kind of got to cut a two and three quarter inch hole in the back of the bus and this will slide onto the bus this way. This the panel will be right here and uh, I'll put screws in from the outside edge. But this has to go on my wire first. So I'll have to put the wire on. I'm going to do this off the bus and just feed the wire through the, the hole when I cut it for this. So I'm going to pull this back here out of the way and it's marked on the back. See, this one has a green hue to it. This one says W. So, and also you can tell, see it's silver? That means it's the common. That's this one here, the white one. The black one's your power line, and the green one is your um, ground. So, let's go ahead and put that green one in there first. And I'll tighten that up. Hi, whiny boy. You coming up here? Are you? Okay, and the white, the white actually has a little white paint on it, but it's also the silver grommet. Well, this one, both of them are silver, but commonly you'll see for your, uh, your uh, hot wire, your power wire, that will be kind of a uh, brass color, but not on this particular one. I don't know why. Okay, I've got that down into position. I'll tighten this one. Well, hello, Rubes. Hi, buddy. 
What's going on there, kiddo? And I'll tighten the hot wire on. You gotta make sure these are nice and tight. So I've gotta go back and check them. Okay. So now we have that in. in. And there it is. So I'll drill the hole in the panel. I'll feed this wire into it. Then I'll screw this in. When the door's open, you see the four screw holes here. All right. So that's what we have for right now.